We talk about movie endings a lot at What Culture because a good or a bad one can make or cripple a movie. A film with a bad start can still be forgiven if it ends well, see The Avengers. But a movie that starts magnificently can be left unfairly tainted if it doesn't quite stick the landing, see Sunshine or I Am Legend, both of which we talked about plenty in the past. Now, full disclosure, some of the endings on this list are already good, but could have been made that much more interesting if the filmmakers had stuck with their original vision. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are eight movies that almost had much better ending. Spoilers, obviously. Number eight, the custard pie fight. Okay, let's start off with one that could earn me a lot of hate, but hear me out, guys. Or don't, I get paid either way. Paper, paper, make it rain. Dr. Strangelove's ending is damn haunting. Doomsday occurs, Strangelove walks, and the Yanks and the Soviets can't stop spying even during the end times. Explosions, Vera Lynn, the end. The film was originally supposed to end with a giant food fight. No, really, and hear me out. Everyone in the war room was going to start throwing pies at each other. Custard pies. It was intended to be an absurd picture of human squabbling, with blizzards of custard representing the missiles and the destruction these stupid men brought about in their childish one-upsmanships. Well, I... I mean... Cup. No, you don't? Well, I think it would have been a good ending. I don't care what you say. Number seven, Globo Jim wins. Okay, another one that would have been hard to swallow, but again, give it time and it really starts to grow on you. Or, once again, don't. I do not care. Dodgeball, a true underdog story, is exactly that, a hilarious sports movie about the triumph of the underdogs. You can dodge traffic, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> Except, the last laugh could have been on the audience. In an extended meta joke, the filmmakers released a fake original ending to Dodgeball, which had the villainous Globo Jim winning, and then the film abruptly ended. It's fooled a lot of people, and although this ending never really came close to the screen, actually, wouldn't it have been kind of great? It feels like an immediate no, considering how joyous Dodgeball in fact actually ended. I love you! but what a cruel, wicked joke it would have been to have average Joes bet everything and just lose. After all, the film mocks itself at every point, never takes sentimentality too seriously. Maybe it would have been less satisfying, but thinking about it, about the worst thing you could possibly have, I don't know, it just makes me laugh. I love you. Number six, Bridge of Birds. Now this is only a small change, a little cherry on the cake of an already good final scene. The ending of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds sees our human protagonist slowly get into a car and drive away with the house and land truly claimed by the feathery sods. The ending Hitchcock wanted was for the car to then drive over the Golden Gate Bridge and see every inch of it also covered with birds. Unfortunately, the effect was deemed infeasible by Hitchcock and his team and was shelved early on, but what a final shot it would have been. Truly iconic and a haunting symbol of the national scale of avian attacks. Number five, Kutcher kills himself. Now, I'm not explicitly stating that any movie would be better if it featured Ashton Kutcher's character killing themselves, especially if the film hadn't starred Ashton Kutcher up until that point. I'm not saying that on advice of what culture's legal team. But that was how the butterfly effect was going to end. Now, in the film, Kutcher plays a dude who messes with time and f***s it up, basically, because, after all, a little Kutcher ruins a long way. Listen close to bag. You screw this up again. I'll flat out castrate you. The movie ends with Kutcher altering time so he never grows up with his childhood sweetheart so she lives a better life. However, one of the film's alternate endings was very different. Kutcher was going to go back in time to when he was a baby, before he was born, and strangle himself in the womb with his own umbilical cord. Now say what you like, that's bold. Demented, but at least memorable in its horribleness. Number four, the Moscow fight scene. Considering that World War Z, the book, is a load of monologues from various soldiers, politicians, and civilians about the Great Zombie War and the protocols thereof, it's astonishing they managed to cobble together a story for it all. In fact, the movie was infamously chopped around, going through several very public backstage troubles and script overhauls. Somehow, it ended up being decent, which is a miracle unto itself. The ending we got was a low-key one, with Brad Pitt sneaking into a facility in Cardiff, which is about as far away from the ending of a typical Hollywood blockbuster as you can get. The original ending, however, 
however, was supposed to be a massive Moscow set military skirmish, which ended up being cut from the movie wholesale. Now, this one's tricky because a small scale, tense ending is actually refreshing for Hollywood, but if you look at the sequences like the escape from Jerusalem and especially the brilliant action scene on the plane, it gives you faith that maybe they could have pulled off something truly special in Russia. Number three, Tom's punishment is paranoia. The talented Mr. Ripley is a wonderfully nasty little film about obsession and murder. Oh. The film ends with the eponymous Mr. Ripley nearly happy with his lover Peter. However, a chance encounter with an acquaintance puts everything he's built at risk, so he's forced to strangle Peter to save his skin. Not bad, but the ending of Patricia Highsmith's book features none of this. No dilemma, no final murder. Instead, Ripley gets away, but accepts the fact that the rest of his life will be spent looking over his shoulder, implying that while he'll live on, he will be driven near mad with paranoia. I think it's downbeat, chilling, and ultimately, in my opinion at least, and mine is the best opinion, it's more satisfying. Number two, Audrey 2 conquers the world. Pretty much everyone involved in making Little Shop of Horrors preferred the original ending to the one the audiences got. The bizarre but much loved musical about alien plants and sadistic dentists originally ended with Seymour dying, everyone dying, and Audrey 2 taking over the world in a series of visually beautiful set pieces such as a plant swallowing a train and taking over the Statue of Liberty. It's camp, sinister nonsense, you know, just like the film is. But the ending tested badly with audiences, so they made a happy one with Seymour and the Lady Audrey killing the plant and living happily ever after in suburbia. Boring. And number one, John Connor becomes a machine. Terminator Salvation was a bit rubbish, not as bad as Terminator Genesis, but then the Black Death wasn't as bad as Terminator Genesis. <laughs> Too soon? Well, turns out that we might have all been spared Genesis had Salvation's alternate ending happened. The original ending was Sam Worthington's Terminator turned good, sacrifices himself to give John Connor his heart and a chance of survival. Take mine. The alternate ending was more warped and more interesting. John Connor dies from his injury, so instead, his skin gets transplanted onto Worthington's Terminator skeleton so that the figurehead of the Resistance can live on without people knowing that inside he's basically a robot meat puppet. Except, it gets even more up because then Skynet takes over the Robo Connor and he wipes out the resistance anyway. Holy crap, what a kick in the balls. It's downbeat, it's kind of horrible, of course it's the ending that Christian Bale was fighting for. Dad, no, shut the f up, Bruce. Do I want? No! No! Now this ending could have turned out worse, maybe, than the one we got, but you can't say it's not way more interesting than the played out sacrifice climax. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.